Hello, this is Tom Gawley of the University of Tokyo. Uh, it's been a week since OpenAI announced their new large language model interactive version called ChatGPT. Um, and in this video, I would like to show briefly some experiments I've done using GPT for language learning. In other words, now that we have this interactive multilingual AI that seems to be able to um, grasp meaning and to interact with the user to some extent, I want to see how well it could be used by language learners and perhaps by language teachers as well too for the learning, maybe even the teaching of second languages. So first I will look at how well ChatGPT can explain the meanings of words in context. For example, if a student is reading a text in a, in a foreign language and there's a word the student doesn't know, can you ask ChatGPT what the word means in this particular context? Many words, of course, have multiple meanings. Next, I will see how good it is at correcting and explaining grammar. Um, for example, if a student makes a grammatical error and is not aware of it, can ChatGPT correct that mistake? And then can it explain the reasons for that mistake? Um, next, I will look at how good it is at sort of a, a traditional task that could only be done by humans, which is um, defining words, uh, giving especially uh, multi-sense words, words that have more than one meaning. Can it give definitions, explanations as a dictionary can? And also, what about example sentences uh, for learning words in another language? It's often helpful to see the words not only in isolation, but also in a context. Can it produce example sentences that would be useful to a learner? Uh, next is a traditional form of of language learning dating back probably hundreds of years is to have the text in the in the second language with uh, detailed vocabulary notes and maybe a translation a side by side translation or even sentence by sentence translation can chat gpt prepare that um, automatically and then looking largely from a teacher's point of view one standard sort of learning and evaluation method um, in language classrooms is quizzes, vocabulary quizzes. Also, learners will sometimes use them to test their own ability. Can we just ask ChatGPT to prepare a vocabulary quiz or not? Well, let's see. Okay, so first of all, for the explaining the meanings of uh, words in context, let's take a case where the user is me, in this case, is um, asking a question in English about um, an English word in an English text. So in this case, I, I said, hi, I don't understand what murky means in the following newspaper article. I think this came from the New York Times. Can you explain it to me? And there's a paragraph there, and you see at the very last line, it ends with um, the, the research is reported because the definition of a whole grain for food is murky. Well, murky is the sort of word that a learner of English might not have learned yet, might want to have to look up in a dictionary. And so let's see what Jet GPT says. Well, it's in this context, murky means unclear or not easily understood. So it gives, a, I think, a correct definition of this meaning in the context. Um, and it says the article is saying that, mm -mm. so it summarizes the article and the meaning of the word in the context of this article, of this paragraph. Um, and I, my reading of that is that it's basically correct. So it did a good job. Um, I got a little curious about etymology. I asked, what is the origin of the word murky? And chat GPT tells me that the word murky comes from the old English word merse, merse or merse, which means dark or gloomy. Uh, according to the Oxford English Dictionary, this seems to be correct. Though it's really more for murk rather than murky, but that's okay. Though you notice it then says it originally referred to a dark and murky appearance. So it's using the word murky to define murky, which is a no-no in dictionary definitions, but it's not a serious, serious problem. Then I asked for some example sentences. Can you give me some other examples of murky used in a sentence? 
And ChatGPT replied, um, yes, here are some other examples of how you can use it. So let's look at those. Number one, the water in the lake was murky, making it difficult to see what was beneath the surface. Number two, the company's financial records were murky, raising suspicions about their business practices. Three, the future of the project is still murky, as we are waiting for approval from the board. Well, there's also four and five. What I want to say about these is that these are excellent example sentences. These are the kinds of example sentences that writers of learners' dictionaries and vocabulary study books strive to make. The reason why is that in each case, the use of the word murky is idiomatic. Um, the collocation of saying that water was murky, the financial records were mur murky, the future were murky, was murky. I think those are all reasonable combinations. Plus, um, in this particular case, the second half of each sentence explains or augments the meaning of murky. Going back to number one, the water in the lake was murky, making it difficult to see what was beneath the surface. So uh, it, it helps to explain the word that's being um, um, exemplified. This is what um, people writing <laughs> example sentences strive to do. I've written hundreds, thousands of those sentences for dictionaries and textbooks and the like over the years. And so this is a really remarkable that it came up with five sentences just off the, off the bat like that. Um, then I, I said, well, what about if, you know, the learner will, might, might be more comfortable asking these vocabulary questions in the learner's first language. So if the learner's first language is Japanese, well, he would ask the question in Japanese. So here's a, uh, another article also from the New York Times in which the, um, there's this phrase on line three. Uh, there's a former football coach for the University of Michigan and he had a football helmet that had Go Blue written on it. Okay, so this is something that a, uh, a Japanese learner of English might not understand. What does glo Go Blue mean? And so the, I, that's what the question in Japanese asks. What, do, what does this mean? And asks for an explanation in Japanese. And so we get an explanation in Japanese that this was the uh, words used um, for the supporters of the uh, American college football team, the Michigan what is that? Well, Michigan Wolverines. Um, and the following explanation is basically correct. Um, and so it's that, well, that was remarkable, I think. Um, and then there's a phrase at the beginning of that text but it refers to this slab of a man. Well, what does slab mean in this context? Well, it explains the original meaning of a slab. A, uh, the Japanese might be a little bit redundant, but it means a large piece of something. Um, and it, but says in this, so the original, it explains the original meaning, and, but then says in this case, it just means this is a big person, a big man. Um, maybe slab has a little more nuance in English than just big, I think, it's, but it's pretty close, okay? Next, I asked about um, the winningest program. What does the winningest program mean? Um, and so one with the most victories was the answer in, in, uh, in Japanese. Um, there's a little bit of a mistake in the Japanese. It says it's, a, it's a, getting the biggest number of wins within the program is what it says on the third line, which is a misreading or misunderstanding of the word program in this context. But I think even though this explanation is not, not perfect, it still would be sufficient for a learner to, to um, grasp the meaning. Then I got a little meta. I said, um, I asked in Japanese, um, if a, a learner like me, um, what should I do to be able to learn vocabulary like go blue or slab or winning this? And then I got this very nice set of advice about from chat GPT about how to build my vocabulary, you know, to make sure I understand all the meanings first and then to actually use them in writing and in conversation with friends and and to make sure I use them more so that they be, they become well established within me as words that I, that I use use them frequently. I don't know I don't know how often you want to use go blue or winningest, but as general advice about um, uh, building and retaining vocabulary, it's it's very good advice. And then I asked for more examples of the of slab used in the, the same meaning. 
Um, and so a slab of bacon, cut the cake into large slabs. Uh, it was so, the rock was so heavy that it took the two men to lift the slab. So I think these are all fine, fine example sentences of it. And then the, the, the last four lines in Japanese are explaining, translating those meanings into, into Japanese. So this first example of words used in um, uh, context, of looking at the meanings of words used in context, worked quite well. Um, let's go on to the second. Okay, in this case, I wanted to focus on um, a word that has more than one meaning. The word oversight is interesting in English because it actually has, kind of has opposite meanings. In When it's used as an uncountable noun, it means sort of supervision or control. And when it's used as a countable noun, an oversight, oversights, it means mistakes, errors, omissions. Um, and so one is a positive thing, the other is opposite, depending on the, the, the form of the grammar. And so it de depends on the context, therefore, to what is the meaning. So first I ask, um, I understand the English word oversight has more than one meaning. Can you tell me what those meanings are? And it defines them. First is an error or mistake, and second is the act of overseeing or supervising something. Defining oversight with the verb overseeing is probably not ideal for a definition. Um, also, the fourth line, it can also refer to a lack of supervision or oversight. And I think that's wrong. I don't think that's correct. Though the second part of the fourth line, a failure to notice something that is correct. Um, okay, so then I ask about a, the case in a particular um, newspaper article. Uh, so here's a sentence from the New York Times a couple of years ago um, that on the line five, it has their strengthening civilian oversight. What does the word mean in this context? And it gives us an explanation. In this context, the word oversight is being used, used to refer to the act of overseeing or supervising something, especially in the context of law enforcement. And then it gives an explanation, which is mostly a paraphrase of the rest of the paragraph, but it does have some sort of new information added that I think is a reasonable extension of that, a reasonable interpretation. So it's a, it's a, it's a, it's a quite good um, explanation of what that word means in this case. Well, here's another example, also from a newspaper article, what does oversight means here? And you see down there towards the bottom, uh, Mr. Inslee apologized for the oversight during a news conference. So we have the oversight and then a little, little later, it says, obviously, we regret that mistake. So a human being reading this understands that this oversight does not mean supervision. It means a mistake. And if you read the entire text, it would be clear. Well, can, what about chat GPT is, yes. In this context, the word oversight is being used to refer to an error or mistake that resulted from a lack of care or attention. And then it explains it, partly with paraphrasing, but... You know, it, it, it reads well and smoothly, and the content matches what, what appeared in the original. Um, and so this is a very, very good summary in English of what that word means in that particular context. Here, um, ChatGPT did not do so well. Um, it was able to correct grammatical mistakes, but it was not able to explain some of them. It was able to explain one, not another. And the one it didn't explain well was really, really bad. So first of all, I, I created this not completely natural and natural sentence, but I, I, so I have this sentence, three, three, few sentences here. I was born in 2004 in Tochigi Prefecture, Japan. When I was a baby, my family lived in an apartment. When I was five years old, my parents bought a house and we moved there. Um, I, I did not underline it. In fact, you cannot underline in the in the input form for G Chat GPT. But so the the article a house was missing. Okay, and so I asked to correct the mistake, and then Chat GPT did correct it. It inserted a. But now and then I ask why? Why did you change house to a house? And the response is I changed house to a house because the sentence was originally written in the singular form, but the subject of the sentence is plural. My parents. In English, well, I won't go on anymore. It's, this is completely wrong. Okay, it's completely, this is not the reason that house was strange and that a house was correct. So this was a worthless um, explanation. 
Um, I, it was a little bit better in this case with number agreement. So I um, asked about, please correct any grammatical mistakes in the following paragraph. Schools and places of work teaches us. So there's a problem there. Um, the to learn was no problem, I don't think. Um, assembly was, I did, I did not have a comma after the assembly in the original one. Um, it added the co comma after assembly. It, it deleted the to for to learn and to grow up on the lines uh, two and five. And that was, uh, okay, either one is correct. The two could be there, it could be not be there. So those were unnecessary changes. But it did correct, it did correct the two um, number agreement problems. So on line one, it's corrected at schools and places of work teach us, not teaches us. And on line five, discipline helps us grow up, to grow up and become happy. So I asked about the first one on the first line. Why did you change teaches us to teach us? And this explanation is okay. I, te I changed teaches us to teach us because teaches is the third person singular form, but the subject of the sentence, schools and places of work is plural. Okay, so that's that's a correct explanation. I, but it even having one correct explanation does not quite counteract <laughs> the completely wrong explanation earlier. So for um, correcting grammar, it, for this very, very small sample, it did well. Um, but for explaining the changes, it was not so good. Okay, this is where ChatGPT did the best, in my opinion. Um, so this was similar to the earlier case with um, oversight. I chose another English word that has uh, a variety of meanings. Critical has a lot of different meanings, the adjective critical. So I first asked, what does it mean? And it gave me several meanings. Uh, um, interesting, it doesn't, it doesn't include, the, the first paragraph doesn't include the meaning to, to say bad things about people, to say negative things, which is maybe the most common meaning in conversation. Um, it gives a meaning um, important and relating to analysis, evaluation analysis, and also medical meaning. And so, um, but anyhow, as I saw so I first, after getting those definitions, which were all fine as far as they went, I asked for some example sentences. Can you give me some example sentences of the word critical used in the meaning important, significant, or essential? So I s focused on one particular sense, one particular meaning, give me some sentences. These are somewhat longer than the sample sentences in that previous example, but they're also all very good. They're very um, appropriate collocationally. Um, sentences are not quite as explanatory as those previous sentences, which is interesting, but they all are fine. For somebody wanting to remember the word critical by seeing it in a variety of contexts, these are all good sentences. So I did the same thing with the next meaning uh, related to the evaluation or analysis of something. Once again, I got five example sentences that are all appropriate for that meaning of the word critical. Then I asked about the medical meaning, and I also got five examples of all of these in the medical meaning. Critical head injury, critical care unit, critical illness policy. Um, all great. Okay. Then I asked, does critical have any other meaning? So one of the features of chat GPT is it, it remembers what happened before. So I don't have to, it remembers the meanings it told me quite a ways back. And now it gives me in this paragraph, it gives me some other meanings, including the judgmental or censorious meaning, a meaning in chemistry, a meaning in mathematics, um, which I think are all correct. And now we get some of these um, meaning of important, critical point, critical decision. Uh, uh, I'm sorry, these are, these are different senses. These are different senses that are being um, illustrated here. See the last one, the critical value of statistical test is the um, mathematical meaning. I think these are all correct. Um, and so then I asked for five more examples in this one particular meaning, the judgmental or censorious meaning. We got five examples there. And then I went on a, kind of a spree. First of all, I started a new session so that it forgot, I think it would have forgot what it had told me before. 
And I start again. I say, I understand that the adjective critical has several different meanings. One of those meanings is judgmental or censorious. Can you give me 10 examples, sentences of critical? So I asked for 10 examples. It gives me 10 examples. They're all quite short, but they're all very natural, very reasonable ones. And I asked for 10 more. Gave me another 10. I think these are all good as well, too. I asked for 10 more. And so it gave me a 10. So I got 30 example sentences of the word critical in one particular meaning. And so, you know, how long would it take a human being to think up those sentences or to find a, a, a similarly short and um, illustrative sentences um, in a corpus? It would take a while. This just took a few seconds. I, by, by the way, I just noticed um, it is um, alternating the gender of the pronouns. Is it all? I just noticed this now. Oh, it does it. Well, we have I in one case here. Otherwise, it's it's he she he she he she he she. So this is the the um, ethical an ethical um, feature of of Chat GPT as of now, I guess, trying to balance gender. By the way, this is you know uh, there. If you go and look at say dictionaries written 40, 50, 60 years ago, English dictionaries, when the example sentences were made up by the authors. It was almost all male um, subjects of the sentences. He 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 he. And very often, depending on the dictionary, there would be there were some old dictionaries where, if it, if a female was the subject of the sentence, it was in some negative um, context. So this is they've made some efforts in that regard. And then I asked for fifty more. Can you give fifty more <laughs> examples? And it refused. <laughs> I'm sorry, but I'm not able to generate fifty more sentences using the word critical. Um, a lot of different requests uh, to chat GPT now give excuses, reasons why it cannot do a particular thing. In this case, it's um, well, one thing it notices, it points out is it cannot browse the internet. And so it's not able to go out and search for information. Uh, but I, 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 I am, you can see I'm personifying it. And I thanked it and it said, you're welcome back to me. In this case, I um, sort of took a, a sort of a more traditional approach to language learning. Um, this the use of annotated texts for language learners um, dates back, as I said, a, a long time. Um, I've used them in my own language study, both uh, many years ago when I was in college studying Russian, um, and later when I was studying Japanese. I've also written <laughs> and translated some several books of this sort of uh, readers of Japanese, for example, where you have the original text in Japanese and then vocabulary notes on the facing page. And so I, so I, I have, took a paragraph from um, a, the first paragraph of a short story by Louise Idrick from a recent issue of the New Yorker magazine. Um, and uh, it's, if you look at it, you see it's a little bit, I mean, it's not sort of the standard academic um, language textbook English, and so it's the kind of thing that um, a typical language learner would face, um, you know, a lot of words to look up if you were trying to read it. Um, and so uh, can we automate that process of looking up the words? And so I asked, please prepare vocabulary notes explaining words and phrases that might be difficult for intermediate learners of English to understand. And there it is. Antecedents colon, ancestors or forefathers, bonanza farm, a large and profitable farm, plagues, swaps, dire weather. This, this is really good. I mean, these are just the sorts of words that um, an intermediate learner would have to look up in many cases, lethal, misty, curtain, scour. Um, and so I think these definitions all work. So if an intermediate learner might prefer the, the vocabulary notes in the first language, so I asked for them in Japanese, and we got the same words, and we got you know Japanese glosses, which all look deep, very good to me. So that was that was remarkable. I asked for a translation into Japanese. Um, so Chat GPT can do translation. Just ask it to translate from one language to another. Um, the tests I haven't done a lot of tests yet, but it, this translation and the few others I've done are on the level of the best machine translation that I've seen. So DeepL is currently the best um, translation engine between Japanese and English. And there are a few mistakes in here, but um, you know, for somebody 
you know, wanting to get the, the meaning of the words and not wanting to sell the translation as a correct translation, but to use it as, a, as an aid to learning, this would, be, this would be good enough. So then I asked to change the format for it. This time, display the sentence, this text sentence by sentence. Show the English sentence, then the vocabulary notes in Japanese for the words in that sentence. Finally, the Japanese translation of that sentence. In other words, just make it easier to use. One sentence at a time. We get, we get a lot more, um, we get more vocabulary notes in this case. Um, and some, for example, the translating the name of the bar is not really meaningful in this case. It's just a phonetic rendering in Japanese. Also, beer is translated as alcoholic beverage. Um, which is not quite correct. But uh, history farming, I think if we go back and read the context, it's the Japanese translation, Rekshi o Nogi o is is probably, probably, probably close enough. Um, maybe not perfect, but it's still pretty good. And it continued that way, sent each sentence. Oh, then it had the translation in Japanese of the entire sentence. Then we have the next English sentence, the notes for that, the Japanese translation. Um, so it did about five sentences and then it stopped responding. This has happened several times when I've asked a question that required a long response. Chat GPT just peters out at some point. Um, I, uh, it, uh, OpenAI is offering it free at this point, so I can't complain about that. Maybe after they start charging for it, you'll be able to get longer responses. Okay, finally, um, I asked it to do, uh, to save some time for language teachers. So I asked to create a vocabulary quiz for an intermediate learner of English. And the words it chose for this quiz, so you can see it's happy, small, hungry, hot, fast, early, loud, dark. Uh, those are all reasonable words to ask about. But this doesn't work as a quiz. So for example, the second one, wh which word means the opposite of small? A, large, B, tiny, C, huge, D, enormous. Well, I think either large, huge, enormous, any of those would be, would be a correct answer. And looking through the rest of them, um, number five, which word means the same as fast? Well, we have both quick and swift as answers. Um, and so it looks like a quiz. It seems reasonable. The words at least fall into the same semantic categories but it doesn't, isn't able to narrow down the answers to, to just one correct answer. Um, then I asked it, or I did the same thing. We make a quiz for a beginning learner of English, and the, some of the words are the same, actually. But these are all very basic words that it comes up with. So that's, it, it does seem to have some grasp of the level of vocabulary. I asked for a quiz for an advanced learner of English. We get tranquil, miserable, vivacious, tolerant. Well, those are all more difficult words. Uh, and then I asked for now make a vocabulary list for a highly educated native speaker of English. And we get words sort of in America, they used to be called SAT words, insidious, incredulous, irony, prudent, ostentatious, lucid, arbitrary. Um, and, and so it, for making quizzes, it doesn't work at this point. Uh, maybe if the prompts were changed, it might, you might be able to you know, get it to, to offer only one right answer. But it is able to choose vocabulary items of various levels based on a very, very simple prompt. So there might be other uses I haven't thought of yet for um, using ChatGPT for preparing um, materials for language learners. Okay, well, this is still a very preliminary tests that we've done so far. And so it's too early to draw any uh, conclusions about whether ChatBT will be able to evolve if soon into a fully fledged uh, language learning support tool for individual language learners, or whether it's going to throw a lot of language teachers out of jobs. But um, it has that potential, I think. It has a, it has a potential um, to, to really revolutionize language learning and maybe eliminate the need for language teaching, depending on how well um, developers are able to integrate it with um, sort of human-like interfaces and, and sticky, sticky applications. Um, I, once again, I was especially impressed by the way it was able to um, disambiguate 
to use a difficult word, disambiguate, um, polysemous words. In other words, to to um, identify the meaning of how a word is used in context and to create example sentences for particular meanings of, of multi-meaning words. Um, that was quite remarkable. And so that suggests that there's a lot more that it can do um, as we figure out what kinds of prompts are needed and figure out what kinds of tasks it can do. I'm sure there are many other things to try. And so I encourage language learners, language teachers to keep trying it. If you have any bright ideas, share them with me, share them with other people through, through social media and your other contacts. There's still a lot to learn about what this uh, remarkable and somewhat frightening tool can do. So thank you very much for listening.